track to hell Where soldiers sons and angels fell As World War II raged in the Pacific, some of the toughest and most bitter battles were fought in Papua New Guinea. None were harder and more heartbreaking than the battle for the Kokoda Track over the beautiful but certainly unforgiving Owen Stanley Ranges north of Port Moresby. Australia lost 2,019 personnel, the Japanese casualties more than 5,000 killed and 5,400 injured. The Australian soldiers were given enormous support by the locals, the Fuzzy Wuzzy Angels. They provided the Australian with local knowledge of the torturous terrain and cared for and carried the injured. As a gesture of enduring thanks, the Kokoda Track Foundation has been working to improve and enrich the lives of locals who are direct descendants of the Fuzzy Wuzzy Angels. Earlier this month, myself and more than a dozen tradies and weekend warrior tradesmen from the south coast, the southern tablelands and Sydney and Queensland paid $3,000 each to join the latest project, the construction of a community hall. We flew into Popendetta, which is 20 minutes north of Port Moresby. Our aircraft was in the airlines of Papua New Guinea-8. Just two days later, a similar aircraft crashed near Madang with the tragic loss of 28 lives. The drive from Popendetta to our destination of Coco Village near Kokoda was a real experience in itself. What the hell? This is a rough old truck. Of All along the road there were locals carrying machetes. We were told, well, no worries, they do it all the time. Just short of our destination, we were met by another truck carrying a special constable, just a precaution, we were told, in case an attempt was made to seize our truck. But the arrival in Coco Village, now that was a different story. <laughs> Next day it was down to business. A couple of tradies and weekend warrior tradesmen and the hall started to take shape. People came from surrounding villages to lend a hand. Uh, the volunteers, like Dave Jardine from Cooma, absolutely astounded at just how good they were. Couldn't wish for better. These guys are so enthusiastic, keen to learn and so willing. I found it real tough going, but they do it really easy. Well, they appear to do it easily. I wish I, my feet were as tough as theirs are. Yeah, you only have to show them something once and they've got it. They um, amaze me with their hammer skills. As the roof went on and the walls went up, the conditions were oppressive. Searing heat and energy sapping humidity, together with thunder and bolts of lightning rolling in from the towering Owen Stanley Ranges. Watching progress was senior local woman Priscilla Ogomeni, one of the first Indigenous high school teachers in Papua New Guinea, who, while she spends a lot of time in Australia, says she still loves to go back home. I think it's a deeper feeling, deeper satisfaction of being one of the community here, and it's my family, it's my land. Um, we are part of land is part of us, and we can never go away from it for good you know it just keeps seems to keep drawing you back home it was one thing to be thankful for though there was no sign of work cover no fluoro vests thongs bare feet replaced steel cap boots and scaffolding png style well that was 44 gallon drums and the roof of a truck however workers did have the lord on their side pastor john betty says uh, the hall will see plenty of use oh it's pretty good i love it Oh, we are going to use it for some occasions like uh, meetings and some gatherings or some sp uh, uh, spiritually uh, like service, uh, service and all this and some other things that you know, require to be done in the hall, we can use it. Aside from the new hall, the villagers also have 10,000 litres of rainwater storage. It is very, very important for us and we would like to thank the Soil Haven Group for donating these uh, two things. It's going to help us a lot because uh, our, normally our uh, creek is uh, just, we, we are taking 20 minutes or 20 minutes to walk down and then back. That's, we, we are having a very, very hard time and now uh, we found out that this, uh, the group has uh, helped us with a tank that will save the community very, very much. Priscilla Ogamani hopes the new hall will help improve educational and life skills. I'm very, very passionate about education because I believe if you educate somebody, 
you educate the nation, you know, and the children are our future generation, future politicians or future accountants or lawyers or doctors or whatever. And that opportunity may be missed out if we do not give them, th them that opportunity to be educated. The Kokoda Track Foundation also handed over 16 beds to the Kokoda Hospital, ex-Liverpool Hospital in Sydney. Prior to the arrival of the beds, patients in one ward were sleeping on the floor. The hospital has 16 staff, led by Dr Leon Syme, and together they see about 23,000 patients a year. Uh, malaria is still a massive problem. Uh, it's not an easy job either, and to get an idea of the workload, uh, Dr Syme says he hasn't had a holiday for six years. He was first on the scene of the Kokoda plane crash two years ago, which claimed the lives of 13 people. He says it was the worst experience in more than two decades in the medical profession. We were the first one to be there uh, to see the plane crash and the people who were killed at the time. So I went first and I would look around to see whether there's any survivors or any injuries. I couldn't find any life there at the time. Only what I could find is, you know, people being, the, the bodies lying all over the place. And they some part of the body were hanging on the trees, branches of trees. Yeah. Must have been a pretty bad sight for you. Yeah, it was first of the first time that we've seen that of an accident, and it wasn't looked you know good. It was very scary for us to go in there. Some of the volunteers also spent two days on the Kokoda track, walking up to the memorial at Isharava. One of those to do the track, John Lamont from Nara Chemicals. It's amazing how they could uh, fight along that track, have people shooting bullets at them and then get through everything. It's just an amazing uh, adventure to try and get some perspective on it because we could not appreciate the hardship that the diggers would have gone through doing that. Back in the village and the Kokoda Track Authority is building new facilities for trekkers. Brian Boone from the Authority says the track sees up to 4,000 hikers every year. It's not an easy walk, it's 96 kilometres of hills. Um, so uh, a couple of things, check out our website www.kokodatrackauthority.org. Uh, there's many of uh, the uh, tour groups have their own uh, websites but the important thing is to make sure people are fit and do lots of stairs and hills but make sure also you've got uh, really good, comfortable, well-fitting boots because if you've got a lot of blisters, it's not much fun doing the track. Down in the nearby Coco Village, and work was all but completed on the hall with the exception of a few ceiling sheets. The hall was named in the honour of Milton Lay from Mollymook, who was one of the driving forces of the project. The first <laughs> reaction was total shock. I'm very proud and honoured, and uh, I guess uh, and my thoughts go through to uh, my father and uh, some of the other volunteers' fathers who served up there. But overall, a great honour for myself, but particularly on behalf of the group. We packed up and we headed for home, leaving behind some wild but beautiful landscapes. Uh, so rugged, we were all wondering just how the Australian soldiers could see the Japanese, let alone fight a war against them. One.